Recently, a friend complained to me, after editing an image using the Flux context model in Comfy UI, he has to transfer the final image to Photoshop, PS, for further processing, which feels rather cumbersome. Is there a way to use Comfy UI's context model directly in Photoshop? After some research, I found this plugin. Once installed, you don't even need to open the Comfy UI web interface. You can directly run any workflow within Photoshop, able to adjust prompts and parameters, and handle both image generation and editing seamlessly. It's extremely convenient. There are two Comfy UI plugins for Photoshop, SDPPP and Comfy Wii Photoshop. After a detailed comparison, I discovered that while Comfy Wii Photoshop looks more polished within Photoshop's interface, SDPPP is more practical and functional. For example, SDPPP establishes real-time bidirectional communication between Comfy UI and Photoshop using WebSocket, offering a smooth user experience. It also supports node naming strategies. By simply renaming node titles, different nodes within workflows can display directly in Photoshop. In theory, it can adapt to all workflows, making it highly flexible. More importantly, the SDPPP plugin's author, Zombiong, updates it frequently, whereas ComfyWe Photoshop hasn't seen much activity for several months now. Since I'm not a hardcore Photoshop user and don't want to deal with compatibility issues on my own, I ultimately chose SDPPP. To install this plugin, search for PPP in the Comfy UI Manager, and you'll find the SDPPP plugin. Select the latest nightly version for download. The plugin is very straightforward to set up and doesn't even have a separate requirements.txt file. That's because 70.9% of its code is written in TypeScript, while Python only handles basic tasks like data packaging, parsing, and message exchange. You can install it without hesitation. Once installation is complete, restart Comfy UI. In the sidebar, below the workflow icon, a new SDPPP icon will appear. Clicking it will show a message like, this workflow doesn't have any controllable nodes, because you currently have an empty workflow open. To get started, click the Photoshop icon to check out the plugin settings. The first line shows the current address for Comfy UI. An address starting with 127 means that Comfy UI can only be used locally. If you'd like to access it from any device within your local network, you'll need to add a line to your startup file. Next, download the Photoshop plugin. Copy the downloaded file to Photoshop's plugin directory, which is usually within the plugins folder under your specific version of Adobe Photoshop. Note that this plugin only supports Photoshop version 24.4.0 and above. After copying, change the file extension from .ccx to .zip. If your system doesn't display file extensions, you can search online for how to enable that feature. Once renamed, the system will recognize it as a compressed file. Simply extract it to the current directory. Open Photoshop. In the extensions menu, you should now see SDPPP which indicates the plugin has been successfully installed. Click to open the plugin's page, and in the address bar, input the previously mentioned Comfy UI address. This is the same address you'd use to access Comfy UI in your browser. It could be local, within your LAN, or even a cloud-forwarded address. Then, click the Connect button to establish a connection. This will display all the workflows available within Comfy UI. Keep in mind that these workflows aren't directly operable within Photoshop just yet. We'll need to make a few tweaks. Switch to the Comfy UI interface, locate the Flux LoRa image generation workflow. I'll use it as an example here. Fix the seed value and run the workflow to generate an image of a girl in a white sweater. Now, go to the Photoshop interface and create a new document titled Demo. Return to Comfy UI, and near the Save Image node, add a new Send Image to PS node. Connect the output image generated by the VAE decoder to this new node. Note that the document and layer names in this node need to correspond to the desired location in Photoshop. Run the workflow again. Back in Photoshop, you'll see that the image has been successfully sent over. However, this still requires running the workflow on the Comfy UI side. Ideally, we'd want to operate entirely within Photoshop. Hold on, it's possible. Let's continue tweaking the workflow. Open the SDPPP plugin in Photoshop and you'll see a drop-down menu for loading models. The options here indicate what can be operated directly within Photoshop. 
In Photoshop, click on the Execute Workflow button. Select the instance that's not built into PS but is the same browser-based instance we set up earlier. Locate the current workflow and click the Edit button. If you don't see the options, or the current workflow's displayed content seems incorrect, try switching instances a few times or simply disconnecting and reconnecting. Currently, this workflow has only one parameter, a drop-down for loading models. Let's return to the Comfy UI interface and add all the necessary node parameters. Here's the logic behind it, some built-in nodes, including basic text, number, and boolean parameters, primitive nodes, simple model loading, checkpoint loader simple, and image upload nodes, load image, load image as mask, are automatically supported. Nodes from the free comfy plugin, such as fast groups bypasser for easy group management, will also synchronize automatically. There are also Photoshop specific nodes, asterisk get document node asterisk, get layer by ID. For all other nodes, synchronization is not enabled by default. However, if you need a node to appear in Photoshop, you can force synchronization by adding a hashtag hashtag symbol at the beginning of the node's name. For example, if we want to directly edit the positive prompt in Photoshop, place your mouse in the top left corner of a text input box within Comfy UI. A small dot will appear, double-click it to create a basic text parameter node. This is supported by default and will automatically display in Photoshop's sidebar. Rename the node title to Positive Prompt for Clarity. Similarly, create two additional nodes to configure the width and height of the image. Next, add the seed parameter from the sampler node to allow easier randomization for creative discovery or fixed results for consistency. In this workflow, let's also include a LoRa loading node. By adding a hashtag, hashtag symbol at the beginning of its title, we enable the ability to select different LoRa's directly in Photoshop. Finally, add an RUG3 group control node to efficiently enable or disable various groups in the workflow. However, let's configure it to control only the LoRa group, right-click the node, select Properties panel, and in the Match Title field of the Settings window, input LoRa to filter and display only specific groups. Now, the node will exclusively manage the LoRa group. With this setup, you can control whether a LoRa node is loaded directly in Photoshop. Back in Photoshop, you'll now see all the options we just configured in the workflow. For example, I set the image height to 768 and clicked Run. A progress bar appeared, and once it completed, the new image was displayed in the current Photoshop document at the size we specified. Save the workflow in Comfy UI as asterisk asterisk PS Flux LoRa image to image workflow asterisk asterisk. Now, you can close the Comfy UI page because you no longer need a browser for using Comfy UI within Photoshop. In Photoshop, the runtime options will now only show the built in Photoshop web page. Let's find the workflow we just saved. If it hasn't updated yet, disconnect and reconnect to force a refresh. Once refreshed, Navigate back to the Flux folder, and you'll find the workflow. Open the workflow and modify the image dimensions. This time, let's generate a vertical image size 1024x768. Click Run to create another image, this time a new illustration of a girl. Clear the canvas and let's test the context workflow, which is particularly useful in Photoshop. Find the workflow I prepared. It's more complex compared to the Flux workflow because it requires reading the image being worked on within Photoshop as input. After demonstrating its use, I'll show you how it works. For example, upload an image of a bag and select it with your mouse. In the workflow, set the input for loading the image as the currently selected layer in the Photoshop document. Leave the other parameters as they are and click Run. This uses a furry texture LoRa for styling. Once the process is complete, you'll get a new fluffy version of the bag. Let's open Comfy UI to inspect this workflow. These three nodes manage document and layer settings and ultimately pull the selected image input from Photoshop into the next node in the workflow. In the middle, we have the standard context process enhanced with LoRa effects, and at the end, the result is sent back to Photoshop. This workflow includes two LoRa configurations, one of which is disabled by default. You can enable it through the group control node. This process is designed for single image input. If you want to input multiple images, you can't simply duplicate the nodes because Photoshop can only handle one currently selected layer at a time. Instead, you can add a hashtag enabled image loading node and select the images manually in Photoshop. I'll share the workflow setup with everyone. Now, let's test the context workflow in Photoshop. 
disable the LoRa nodes, upload an image, and select it. Enter a prompt like transform into Ghibli style and click run. Isn't that simple? The result is generated, and even if the target dimensions, asterisk asterisk 1024 x 1024 asterisk asterisk, differ from the aspect ratio of the original image, the consistency and overall result are excellent. I won't demonstrate more examples for now. Today's focus was to show you how to use Comfy UI workflows within Photoshop. In my opinion, once you've set up the environment and prepared specific workflows, even users without any understanding of Comfy UI can easily operate in Photoshop. This is particularly suitable for teams needing specific workflows, such as context-based image editing or reactor for face swapping. That's all for today's guide. Both the plugins and workflows are linked in the description. Feel free to check them out if you're interested. See you next time.